This morning in my meditation, I'm not really sure why, but my experience with DMT popped up. I did DMT when I was 24, so this was like almost, this was eight years ago. This was a long time. No, I guess I was 25 or 26 at the time. Anyways, it's been a while since I've done it and it was a really crazy experience uh, for me because I wasn't really a heavy psychedelic user. I had tried, lightly I had tried mushrooms, I smoked weed. Other than mushrooms that one time, this was my only psychedelic experience, my true psychedelic experience because when I did mushrooms, it wasn't a true trip I feel like because I did see some things, but it was very light and it was very um, inconsequential. It wasn't really anything that challenged me at all. It was just something kind of fun and light and airy and bubbly, and then it ended. So with DMT, I had a completely different experience. I did experience a dissolution of self and what they call ego death for a short amount of time, um, but it felt like an eternity to me in my mind. And maybe I'll go through and explain everything that I had experienced during that trip because it was actually pretty cool. Um, and it definitely opened me up to things that I didn't really think about before the trip, like my own mortality for one. And um, one thing that it did do is afterwards I had this residual effect of being able to feel energy within the room or energy within the space where I was. It almost felt like, so while I was coming down from the DMT, it felt like I was kind of stuck in between different dimensions. So I could feel things from the dimension that we live in, the dimension that I'm used to. Um, and then I could also feel things from other dimensions that were there and true and have always been there, but I just didn't have access to in my normal state of mind. So afterwards, after I came down, I felt like I could still feel residual energy from these other dimensions that I had been in. And these dimensions were basically other layers of being, other layers of reality that I could feel and experience within the space that I was. So when I'd walk into a room, I could feel darkness in certain areas and lightness in others. I couldn't see it, I could just feel it. I could feel that there were traces of darkness in certain spots and then traces of light in certain spots. And while I was actually tripping, I could really feel this so intensely. And the areas of darkness were really scary for me. And the areas of light were very comforting. So I really had to cling to those areas of light to those things of light um, because I was freaking out and I felt like I was losing myself and if I focused too much on the dark areas that I would lose myself in the dark. And for some reason I thought of this during meditation and at the time I thought that I was feeling the darkness of things that maybe had happened in those areas or... I'm not really sure where that darkness came from that I felt in certain spaces, but I'm realizing now that it was darkness that I had experienced in certain spaces. So one of the places that I went into where I really felt a lot of darkness was in my old apartment where I had experienced some really um, traumatic situations and it wasn't anything too crazy I wasn't like hurt or anything like that um yeah I had experienced some really traumatic situations in that traumatic for me anyways in those areas and I'm finally eight years later realizing that it wasn't things I had thought that maybe it was like things that had happened in that apartment before I had ever lived there or, you know, some or like traces of, of energy that other people had left in those spaces. And for some reason, in my meditation this morning, I realized that it was traces of darkness from situations that I had experienced in those places. And it really clicked with me how important it is 
especially as a sensitive person, if you know that you're the type of person that can walk into your room and feel what is happening within the room and within the people around you, it is so important that you, A, have boundaries around your own energy and protection around your own energy, but then B, be able to discern what is light and what is dark and to cling, so to speak, or to gravitate, to focus on, to move towards the things that are light for you, the places that bring light for you, and really discard and start ignoring the things that bring you darkness. At the time for me, the situation that brought me darkness was a relationship that I was in. And for whatever reason, I clung to that darkness, probably because of my childhood or whatever experiences I had growing up, because there was a lot of darkness in my childhood, but there's also a lot of light as well. But I knew that darkness very well. It was a very specific kind of darkness that I was well acquainted with. So naturally, because it's what I knew, I think that I hung on to that darkness a lot longer than I should have. In reality, I should have moved away from that darkness to begin with. I should have never been in that situation. But I didn't know any better at the time. I just knew what I knew. I knew what felt familiar. If you grew up with darkness in your house and darkness within your family, it is important that you do not enter situations that mimic or imitate the situation that you grew up in because it will only lead to more darkness and you will go down a path where things will get darker and darker and darker and darker and darker. You have to cultivate the light and you cannot cultivate light in dark places. And that is the thing that all sensitive people tell themselves is that they can do that, that they are the ones, they are the chosen ones to bring lightness to whatever dark situation comes across their path. And that is not your job because that darkness will eventually get to you. It will eventually infiltrate your energy and it will infiltrate your light. And there's nothing you can do once you've let a dark situation also turn you dark or a dark person also turn you dark until you realize what actually is going on and wake up, snap out of it and move back towards the light. But at that point, once you're so entrenched in that darkness, it can be extremely difficult to move back towards the light and it happens very slowly and in baby steps. So the core message that I have for anybody listening to this today is move towards the things where you feel light. It's not complicated. You can feel it right away. If it's not a light situation, do not enter that situation. Even if it's with somebody you love, It doesn't mean that there will be darkness in that relationship forever. It just means in that particular moment, if there is darkness, then you need to move away until you can assess the situation and figure out what it is that you need to do to maintain your light because one of two things will happen. Either the other person will get back into their light and then you guys can come back together or if they're just a plain dark person that does not feel the need to cultivate light in their own life, then you guys will not remesh. And that's a good thing because you don't want to stay enmeshed with somebody whose core reality, whose core energy trace is darkness. Anyways, that's all I have time to say right now. I hope this helped somebody out there and I will see you in my next video. Bye.